Prom. Yay. Prom. And for those of you who have prom on Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, we one of our schools, we deal with many, many schools. So one of them is bound to be on Mother's Day weekend because they don't ever ask a florist. So our delivery driver coordinator preps our corsages for us. It's delightful. So we have trained her. So she makes the bows. She preps the backs. So how we sell a corsage, we try to sell corsage and boutonniere together. So we want to do them as a set. And then we have them pick out their bracelet. We have them pick out their bling. We have them pick out their ribbon. We put a little snip of ribbon and this in a corsage bag and any bling that they've chosen and we attach that to the order. So then she knows when she's, okay, this is what's going in. This is the recipe for this. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Um, one of my favorite things is this. It's a peel and stick boutonniere. So I am not the inventor of a peel and stick boutonniere. That's Kevin Yilvesacker. Kevin Yilvesacker made these really cool wire work boutonnieres. And I thought, okay, that is such a cool thing. But there's got to be a way that you can take any normal looking boutonniere and make it peel and stick. So this is my invention. I'll show you how I do it. I use flat wire. I take about a three inch piece of flat wire and one strip of U-glue. I'm going to cut the strip of U-glue in half. You're all familiar with U-glue? Oh, it's awesome. Okay, so U-glue is a pre-cured adhesive. This is a strip. It also comes in dashes. A dash is like a half inch by half inch glue dot, if you will. Um, I'll show you. The, the trick with U-glue is how to pull it off. We'll just show you on my bottle here, okay? So. This is a strip. U-glue works best flat surface to flat surface. I'm not going to use it to attach flowers into this design because flowers are generally not flat. But if you want to remove it, so it's virtually clear. So if you want to remove it, it's kind of like a 3M command strip. You just pull up an end and then pull down like a 3M command strip and it releases. Yeah, if my arms are long enough. Okay, if you try to pick it off this way, those special words come into play. <laughs> so that's U-glue. So I'm going to use U-glue today to attach. So I'm going to, I took my U-glue strip, I cut it in half. I'm going to put half of it on one end of my three inch piece of flat wire. And I'm going to take the other half and put it on the same end on the opposite side. Okay. So I've got you glue on each side on each end. And then I want to cut away a stem. So I'm, these are my utility scissors. They're the scissors with teeth. These are not my ribbon scissors. And I'm going to cut up from the bottom until I have a skinny stem. <coughs> because I'm going to add this on, whether I'm taping it or binding it in, like this one is bound with some bullion wire. I'm going to take a leaf. And I'm going to use, oh, let's use, pick a leaf. Oh, here's a rose leaf. Might not be big enough, but it'll give you the idea. I'm going to peel that off. And then I'm, uh, Israeli ruscus is great. Ideally, it would cover all of that. If it doesn't, you can always trim it. So now I have a leaf that becomes the back of my boutonniere. So if I were to just do, let's take some stuff. Let's take, if I were doing a little cluster boutonniere, I've got my rose, I'm not even gonna wire it. I've got a little kangaroo paw, little seeded eucalyptus, that ruscus that I rescued from that other, my little bits. And then the last thing I'm going to do is put this leaf backing on it. And then if this would be a cluster boutonniere that I might just take, um, you know, a little bullion and wrap around that binding point, or I might tape it all the way down. 
So if I taped it all the way down, that little thing would be covered. Okay, so that's more traditional looking boutonniere. So when we do this, on whether it's a wedding, I sell these on weddings, or whether it's a prom, there's always a sticker or a piece of paper that is stuck to the bag. We bag ours and then it goes in a box and on the inside it'll say, this is a peel and stick boutonniere. Simply remove the white paper backing and press firmly in place. And press firmly in place is bold, italics, highlighted yellow, and underlined. Yes? The, uh, the red um, you know, tape that you use there, whatever uh -huh. it's called, uh -huh. the wire, does it come in other different colors? This? No, the red. The flat, yeah, flat, flat wire. This? Flat yes. 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 Okay. I just pulled off the one they had the most of. Okay, okay. Ultimately, you don't see it, so. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get, a, that red is so bold, like, like yeah. a cream or something. Yeah, there's silver, gold. Okay. I mean, okay. ultimately, you don't really see it, so I'll use whatever color I can. Okay. And so, that is simply remove the white paper backing and press firmly in place. <laughs> and you just have to press firmly, and now it's on my skin, but whatever. Okay? So cool. It won't fall off. Like. If you press it firmly in place, it will not fall off. <laughs> <coughs> if you just show it to the lapel, like this. Can you use it for a pin-on corsage I mean, also? You can use it for a pin-on corsage also. You, I would probably do it on two leaves, maybe two points of attachment, but you just have to. Press firmly in place. And then it's like, if I want to move it, I can move it. Okay? So all of our pocket squares that we do, because I won't do the cardboard wrapped with ribbon, blah, blah. I, no. Um, this is a peel and stick pocket square. Simply remove the white paper backing and press firmly in place at the top of the pocket, because God forbid, <laughs> the groom doesn't know that his bride has purchased a pocket square and you see the pictures and he's wearing it like this. <laughs> True story. I'm like, tell him. So we now we put a label on everything. Because the guys aren't often with the girls when they're getting ready and poor guys. So this is very easy for them to apply themselves. Prom, easy, pocket squares for prom. This just goes at the top of the pocket. So the way that this is done, same three inch piece, full strip of U glue on one side and a full strip of U glue on the other side. Okay? And then I'm going to peel off one side and this is where I'm going to lay leaves. I might lay this again, to tack things in, pl in, in place quickly, a flat leaf like an Israeli ruscus, this is Italian, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to glue everything else on here. You can see, I just started it. So I'm going to press this one, if you look at it, and I'll pass this around, you'll see um, I just took rose leaves and pressed those and covered it with rose leaves. You could do it with Salau. You could do, I usually do Israeli Ruskus because Israeli Ruskus holds up like nothing. So if you want to, you can take and pass that around. Pardon me? Yeah, so the strips comes in a box like this. And then the, the dashes come in a box like that. No, those are, those are small, half inch by half inch. And in a box like this, you get 250 of these. And so where I might use that, like if I'm doing that, this pocket square, let's say I've covered up a lot of the, the U-glue, and I maybe need to put another leaf on there. I could either use my Oasis adhesive, or I could use another dash and lay another leaf and then glue over the top of it. Okay? Good. Okay, so we've done two boutonnieres. We've done two boutonnieres, and now I'm going to go, we're going to go traditional corsage. 
So this is traditional corsage. Here's my issue with traditional corsage. <laughs> So I'm going to start from just this, I'm going to take it right out of the package. We're going to do it start to finish how we do it. So this is a bubble bath, rose gold. First thing I'm going to do is stretch it. Why am I going to do this? Because the last thing I want is for her to put it on her wrist and have it go all over the place. That's rare. But I've had it happen, especially with like a special day bracelet, the little itty bitty inexpensive pearl bracelets. Yeah, I just stretch those, make sure, make sure it's not going to snap on her arm. Prom, wedding, whatever. So they have that plastic attachment disc and then they have that ribbon rose. That ribbon rose is there just in case, God forbid, you should wire and tape a corsage. You could tie it on with that ribbon rose. You would just undo it and then use that ribbon to tie on your flowers you'll find that, that that one point of attachment is often not tied really tightly. So I undo it, I tighten it down, I tie it in a knot, and then I cut it off. I cut it off. I don't use it. So, this can be pretty floppy because it's still just attached at that one point. So what we normally do is take a number nine piece of ribbon. Here's where I'll take my pan melt glue. Take my pan melt glue, put it on the top of that attachment disc. This is my little honey dipper. It's made with a chenille. Looks like a honey dipper. I'm going to take the ribbon, press it into that glue. I'm going to wrap it underneath the entire, so this would be the part that would go up against her wrist. Come up to the other side, a little more pan melt glue. And a, just as long as you can wrap it around the whole thing. Okay. And I didn't cut that quite long enough because I had one on the diagonal, but you get the idea. Okay, so that just stabilizes that entire center. Okay, now I'm going to attach my bow, and I'm going to attach my bow with pan melt glue too. But you'll notice I have tied my bow with a chenille. I've tied my bow with a chenille because a chenille grips to glue like nothing else. So I would normally use a white chenille, but I had yellow, and I'm cheap, and I didn't want to open up a box of white. <laughs> so I'm going to take pan melt glue. And this, and I'm going to put a dollop of pan melt glue in the center of that. And then I'm going to press my bow in place. And I've already made this bow. Um, and I made it a little long, so it's going to drape off her wrist a little bit. Okay? I'm just going to press that in place and then move the loops around so I'm covering up any globs of glue. Ultimately, I'm going to glue flowers onto that. So, okay? Now I know that part is secure. Everything else I'm going to use cold glue. If you're using the yellow pillow pan melt glue, it has adhesive in it. So you can, there's definitely, you can tell when it's on your skin, there's adhesive in it. So when I'm doing, one of the reasons I like to use the cold glue, I will try not to goober up the tablecloth. Yeah. No. Glue, glue stick glue is clear because glue stick glue is just plastic. Okay. It's just melted plastic. Okay. So there's no adhesive in it to, no adhesive. per se. Okay. But the yellow pillow pan melt glue, mm -hmm. it, there's adhesive in this. So it's adhesive and plastic. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, let's see what I got over here. Okay, I'm going to take some of my lovely blooms. Um, I've got some spray roses down here. I'm going to just pluck them off. Okay. These are pretty open. And I'm going to place them face down on the table. This is like a shell game. <laughs> um, and then I have my adhesive. Normally when I open this and I have the box, I'm going to make a little stand with my box and I'm going to pop it there and I'm going to put my little lid there. But this has been traveling around in my toolbox so the box is long gone. So I'm going to take this off and set it over there on not a black tablecloth so I can still see it later. 
I'm going to apply the adhesive to all three, uh, four of these at once. I'm just applying it directly to the back of all of these at once. I can't do this if I'm using pan melt glue. <coughs> This is Oasis Adhesive. It's cold glue. Okay? And then I'm also going to take and just wipe off the tip of my glue in the center of my bow because adhesive to adhesive is the strongest bond. So I'm going to lay down some adhesive in advance. And you notice I'm not really in a hurry right now to put those in and we're just going to chat and it's going to be lovely and pick out of the garbage. <laughs> and I'm doing that because I'm allowing it to get tacky. So this glue is sort of setting up a little bit in advance. So then I can take one, two, three, four, hold all four in place at once. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> and then I could, okay. And that's just real simple and quick. Are they super set right now? No, but they're set enough. I usually try to work with it on the table at all times. So at the shop, we have these things that look like an ironing board. So it's like a one by two with a chunk of wood and a little one by two. So it goes like this. And I have a C clamp that C clamps it to my table. And I can slide on bracelet, 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 and I can work on two, three more at once. Pardon me? Shirt. Yeah, like a sleeve board. Yeah, if it's yeah, if it's small enough to fit that, yeah, absolutely. Um, there was a lady in Pennsylvania that came up to me after a show, and she said, "Oh, my husband makes these things for us." And I, I said, I couldn't picture what she was telling me. And then she said, "I'll just send you one." So she took my address and she sent me one. And then we had our MacGyver guy make up more, so we have more at the shop. Um, so it's a nice little contraption if you don't have that you can always attach it to your water bottle or your paint can and put it in place that way or PVC, pipe. or PVC pipe if you can put that in a cradle of some kind that's even better so we did applying direct to the back of the flower and now I'm gonna dip and stick so now I'm gonna try to remember where my glue is <laughs> and I usually do this in like a corsage box pin corsage pin box lid or you can always, I'm just going to squirt a little puddle of adhesive on this uh, bracelet bag that it came in. I'm going to dip and stick. So I'm going to swirl it in my adhesive and just stick. I'm going to dip and stick. This is where I'm going to move the bracelet, uh, move the corsage around and make sure I don't have any glue showing. I'm going to add, I'm adding just little bits of a still be. I'm going to make this kind of like a cascade, sort of. Just lifting up those loops of ribbon and underneath the blooms. And then I'm going to take some seeds from my seeded eucalyptus. And I'll glue those in too. I'll rip off the leaves and then I'll add those in later. So some seeds. They kind of pick up. These have a little bit of that that um, rosy color on the tips of the seeds. So it's going to blend really well with that rose gold bracelet. I'm going to add in another little chunk of a stilby. And then when I've got it mostly designed, I think I might add a little, a few bits of greenery to this, a couple individual. Israeli leaves. No, this is Italian Loan. Some Italian leaves just to give me some contrast and some green. We'll just tuck in a little bit of that. I'm doing this, you know, super quick. And then at some point, like right now, now is a time where I'm going to pick it up and go, do, is there any place I need to really cover some uh, mechanics? Like is there a little visible glue showing? Do I need another leaf here or there? So I'm going to put this one leaf in. The last thing I would do with this is spray it with crowning glory, ideally. Ideally, in a perfect world, let it dry 
in a perfect world. If this is the last corsage before I go home, I'm going to bag it and go home. But ideally, if you can, let it dry. I mean, it used to be more of an issue. They've since uh, Crown and Glory, there used to be two formulas of Crown and Glory. It used to be that really milky Crown and Glory and clear Crown and Glory. Clear Crown and Glory sprayed like finishing touch. You know, sprayed clear, didn't change the finish. Now all Crown and Glory is clear Crown and Glory, unless there's some that is still, they don't produce the other kind anymore. So um, then you just have nice bracelet. Oh yeah, you can make these up, you know, Wednesday for Saturday. Really? Flower dependent, yeah. Dendrobium orchids, easy, no problem. You could do those Wednesday, Thursday for sure for Saturday. Yeah, Friday prom, easily Wednesday. What about succulents? Those are starting to become popular. Yeah, you can do succulents, not a problem. Succulents will hold actually in the cooler. They'll hold really well. So you could do those days in advance as well. If you were dealing with something that's super fragile, you might want to save those corsages for closer to the date. But like spray roses, um, ranunculus, uh, dendrobium orchids, most of your filler flowers, uh, accent blooms, um, a stilby, as long as you're spraying it with crown, I, you could do it days in advance, especially when you've got those Mother's Day weekend. Get those all done and in by, you know, early. Not if I use enough adhesive. Okay. So which is more of an issue? Not enough adhesive or too much adhesive? Yeah, exactly. Uh, only because, like, it seems like when we put it in the cooler, that, especially the pan glue, we, we tried that too a couple of times, mm -hmm. that when it gets cold, it reduces the... So that's why I, that's one of the reasons I don't use this on any of the fresh product. On the materials, right. it grips really well. Yeah. And then make sure you use enough adhesive to make sure it's going to stick um, really well. Too much adhesive can be really messy and you have to just make sure you cover up all your mess. So that's the issue with that. Not enough adhesive, this whole thing falls off. So what I'll do is I'll make up several and then I'll go back and I'll do a little tug test. If I have anything that's fallen out, then I'm going to go back and re-glue that. And that's another, if you can, let it dry. The cooler doesn't affect this glue whatsoever. Not at all. It's like rubbery. Okay, um, a couple other things. This is kinesiology tape. I'm not going to do a full demonstration with this, but if you have to do an armband, this is the easiest way to do it. And I would normally do like maybe, maybe a fourth of a strip. This is a 10 inch piece of kinesiology tape comes in fun colors. This is just, you know, nude. So you can glue directly to the kinesiology tape. So I'll show you. We'll do a couple. Just a few. <coughs> and I'll apply the adhesive directly to the back of this. And these I'm going to cut flush. No nubby at all on them. I'm going to apply the adhesive to all three. I wore one of these as a choker. I don't recommend that. The skin on your neck is a little more sensitive than your arm. <laughs> or if she has a slit up to here, a dress with a slit up to here, it could be a, a peel and stick garter. So this is a peel and stick thing, but it's more flexible. It could go on uh, the curve. It could go on the shoulder, it could go over the shoulder, it could be an armband without having to know how big is her arm. It just sticks. Okay, so I've got my three roses. I'm going to take a little bit of glue just right on my tape. And then I'm just going to do these three in a row. You, of course, would do it prettier. Dog collars accepted us to stick to their fur. Could stick, it to the Could stick it to the collar, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely stick it to the collar. The nice thing about the K-tape is it's made to be stuck to skin. And it's made to be worn for days. So, I mean, but you could stick it to a dog collar. It would stick. 
We used to do this on Band-Aids. So we used to do it before K-Tape, we did it on Band-Aids. And then you would do, you could make little daisy, little tattoos on the little round dot Band-Aids. You can do the same thing with K-Tape, you just cut it up. So I'm going to, hopefully this is stuck well enough. And then with this, like let's pretend. You would let it set. We'll come back to this. You would let it set, or you might want to apply a little more adhesive. And then I'm going to do one thing, and you're all going to go, <gasps> okay. We'll let this set. We'll come back to it. I'm going to show you one last thing. We're doing a lot of ribbon tie-on corsages. So it's on a ribbon. can match the dress color. We're going to tie it on. We also have a lot of requests for full-size roses, right? Okay, so I normally don't have roses this gigantic. Um, so I'm going to do it with a red rose, but it's still gigantic. It's a huge rose. Should I try it with this one? Try it? Okay, I'm going to try it. Um, okay, so... I'm going to pluck off a few of the outer petals, just a little big, and there a few have bruises. So I am going to, it's big. Okay, ready? I told you. Okay. It's easier with a rose that's not full open. But there's a ranunculus look. Okay, so now I'm going to try it with this. So I'm going to hold on to this for dear life. You saw the center already fell out of it. I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to put it back in. And now I'm going to apply adhesive to the entire, every edge. It's much better much easier without this gargantuan rose. Okay, so for my daughter's scene, my daughter is now 21, she's graduated from college, but for her senior pictures, I was at a wedding event with one of our photographer friends, and I said, oh my gosh, it was, it was February, and I hadn't done her senior pictures yet. It was February. And I said, oh my gosh, I gotta get Jenna's senior pictures done, I kinda wanna make a floral dress, and she's like, oh, yeah, I would love to do that. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so we set up a time for March. I made a red rose floral dress, took 100 roses, seven hours, and a lot of special words. <laughs> I like the special words. Yes. And it was done with this technique. So I made a circle skirt out of heavy-duty felt, reinforced the waistband. Uh, we did a two-hour photo shoot for her senior pictures. One hour of it was this red rose dress. I bought a stretchy shirt at Salvation Army. I spray painted it red. I slid it up the back. I added in Velcro so she could go into it like this. Um, and then we did the photo shoot. It had um, the floral mesh reinforcing the skirt so it had a little wave to it. It was lovely. And then um, it was actually in the couture, the couture issue of Floris Review that year. And then it is in a couture, uh, couture book, like floral couture book. And she's in that. So she's got red glasses, red shoes, red rose dress. And each rose was deconstructed like that. So half of it was petaled and half of it was... Um, just full open big roses and full open roses around her shoulder. The last part of it I did with her in it. So in the, in the book, I think, they show her laying on our, de our delivery table <laughs> in full makeup um, with, this, with this red rose dress. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of a stilby in this. And then I'll pick it up and pray. 
We're going to pray. Okay. And the big part is the pray part. Right? Hold your head just right. Hold your tongue just right. And the big part is, is there enough adhesive to hold this thing together? Yeah. Felt is wonderful. Glue, Oasis Floral Adhesive sticks fantastically well to felt. So now we're going to let this sit for two seconds. I'm going to go back to this. Now I can peel this off. And now this could go, you know, armband. Let's pretend it was finished and lovely and I didn't have a shirt on. No, don't pretend I don't have a shirt on. Oh, that's a different show altogether. And nobody wants to see that. This, as much as I can get. So think of, um, you know, you've got, of course, the cost of all your materials, but prom stuff is on a whole different level of margin and, and labor than, so, you know, I would probably minimum 35, 40, 45, 50, depending on what I've got in it. Maybe I've got orchids in this. Maybe it goes, you know, from the back to here, and maybe that's, I've got 10 inches of, maybe I've got that full strip to kind of spiral around. So, you know, you know the time you've got in it. Um, I would, I probably wouldn't do anything even simple for below $35. You could do this. I don't recommend it, but I've done it, and I wore it for a show. And then I pulled it off and I had a red neck. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that right there. Okay. So this is flat. So I just did, so construction on this. I started with, you want to tie me on? Yep. So construction. Let's tie I, one on, girl. Let's tie one on. I started with a... Uh, the strip of ribbon, it's, you know, I don't know how, 30 inches. Yeah, I don't want to tie it, but not. Okay. So I started with a strip of the ribbon, and I have one strip of U-glue pressed in the center, and then I just laid those leaves on. And then you saw what I did to that rose. That, that is really pretty. Mm -hmm. that's really pretty. And that's probably the biggest rose I've ever done this with. <laughs> it's ginormous. <laughs> the toughest part is cutting it, yeah. Better not. So each because I put because I put that adhesive on every petal, and I was doing it really quick, so I may have missed a few. But yeah, every petal, and then I'm going to spray it with Crown and Glory. And so every petal is attached to that ribbon or the leaf. Yeah. So this, you can do it with little ones too. So sometimes you'll get a spray rose that's just massively tall. So I've done, um, I've done pocket squares with cut spray roses because sometimes those spray roses are huge. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah. And put fresh flowers around for the hair and, and do that. Have you ever done anything like that for the head? So, m most of the time, that's an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I've done that just in a normal flower crown. So, I would just make like a garland okay. and then glue my flowers into it. So, I might make a base out of baby's breath or greenery or something and then glue my flowers into it. But you easily could do it with a ribbon. Okay. You easily could do it with a ribbon and then just tie it on. It's a gorgeous, start with a beautiful rose, and then, yeah, yeah. So that's how you would do a full size. So if you get a request for a full size rose, just know that you have options. Any other questions? How long do you, uh, what size do you um, cut your ribbon? Is that, what, two feet long? Or? This is about uh, somewhere between two feet and 30-ish inches. Just the best thing to do is drape it over and know that you want to probably tie a nice soft bow with it. So this is grow grain. Satin is a really nice one to just tie a really nice soft bow. You say you'd have a nice soft bow on the wrist. So it's a, I would say somewhere between 24 and 30 inches. 36 would give you long tails. Any other questions?
Good. Okay. Thank yous. Huge, huge, huge thank you to Bayesian Skinner for putting this whole thing on and, you know, investing in you and for you. Yeah. 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 And I'm clapping and it's not falling apart. And thank you for you, for you spending your day and investing in yourselves, which is awesome. And I hope you picked up a few tricks that you can use, at least a few. And um, so I'll, I'll be hanging up here for any other questions that you might have. And thank you again. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We can.